A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen takes her place at your right hand, in gold of Ophir. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Hear, O daughter, and see. Turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. They are borne in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Mary is taken up to heaven, a chorus of angels exults. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at that moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears. The infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, 
for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months, and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the gospel of the Lord is the gospel of life. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and that's the central truth of our faith and the central truth we celebrate today. As Paul proclaims in today's second reading to the Corinthians, he is risen. Jesus Christ has conquered death, but he didn't conquer death just for himself. He already, always, forever had the full glory of God, He conquered our death. He conquered death so that we too might share resurrection. And that's what Paul goes on to say in this passage. It's Jesus' resurrection is the first fruits. As I always say at Easter time, we don't just come to church to congratulate Jesus for rising from the dead. We come to celebrate the fact that it is our victory too. His resurrection is the first fruits when the harvest would be gathered in. The very first batch of whatever was being harvested would be brought as an offering before the Lord. And it was a sign of more to come. The resurrection of Christ is a sign of more resurrection to come for his body, the church. All in proper order, Paul says, we too will rise. What the church is celebrating today is that that proper order puts next, after Christ, his own mother. Church has always believed this, and isn't that appropriate? That his own mother, who said, all generations will call me blessed, he has done great things for me, he has cast down the mighty from their thrones, death has been cast off its throne, the mighty one that instills fear in all humanity and seems to have the last word. It does not anymore. The mighty have been cast down. The power of death has been overturned. And he has lifted up the lowly, we who live in the shadow of death. He has lifted us up. Mary is saying this of herself. And then by extension, this prayer, the Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord, is said by the whole church every single day. It's the canticle in the evening prayer of the church in the liturgy of the hours. So these words are applied to us. So Christ cast down the mighty one from his throne. Death, the kingdom of death, the kingdom of Satan. He lifted up the lowly, all those who are united with him. How closely Mary was united with him. It was from her that he took his humanity. He alone is the mediator between God and humanity. But how did he become that mediator? He had to take humanity upon himself. He did so from Mary. So she, at the end of her earthly life, was taken up body and soul into heaven. Now, this doesn't mean Mary is some kind of a separate God, separate divinity. Of course not. She's a creature like the rest of us. She needed to be redeemed, though she was redeemed in a unique way by Christ having preserved her from sin in the first place. But it's still Christ because she says, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. But she is taken up into the glory of heaven, body and soul, as we will be too. Body and soul. This feast reminds us of the final victory of life. It reminds us too that human beings are not just spirits. 
Mary's body is assumed into heaven. Our bodies will be raised from the dead. The human body is just as much the human person as the soul. And this is extremely important in this culture of death because there's a strong tendency to think the body doesn't matter. Well, you know, the body, you, you, you can have an abortion and the baby goes back to God. No, you're killing the baby. You're killing the baby because you're killing the body. What God does to receive the soul is a separate matter, but you, the, you kill the body, you're killing the person. Same is true with euthanasia. Some people think, oh, well, I have to escape from my body. You're not escaping from your body. You are your body. Similarly, when we express love, some people think, well, as long as the intention of love is there, it doesn't matter what kind of body the person you love has. Yes, it does matter. In God's plan, it's the human body of a man united with the human body of a woman, and that's determined in the body, not simply by what you think. So this feast celebrates the unity of body and soul. It also celebrates the beauty of life right from its beginning. The woman in this chapter from Revelation that symbolizes the eternal warfare between good and evil, between God and Satan. Although Satan's kingdom has been defeated, it's not eternal in that sense. But it still plays out in our time, doesn't it? Until the second coming of Christ. Although his kingdom has been defeated, he still has a limited power and we still have to fight against him. This battle is described here as the devil waiting upon an unborn child to devour that child. And Mary, when she's about to sing this Magnificat, has Jesus in her womb, Jesus who makes John the Baptist leap for joy in his mother's womb. And she's there to assist a pregnant mom in the final three months of her pregnancy. God saves us through pregnancy and childbirth. God says that the kingdom belongs to children. The battle between good and evil is played out in the giving of birth and the sending of the Savior is celebrated by a birth. We who celebrate the victory of life over death affirm and rejoice in the giving of life, in the children in the womb, in welcoming those children, in the affirmation that every life is an expression of the glory of God, and that glory comes to its fullest expression in the resurrection of the dead. The assumption of Mary is our hope. Where she has gone by Christ's grace, we will follow by that same grace. Let us embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice in the gifts he has given to Mary. Let us ask her intercession that in this journey of life we may always celebrate the victory of life over death, choose and affirm life, and look forward to that life that never ends. Amen. <laughs>